Part of the training for long-term students at Rewild University involves scenario challenges. The scenario challenge out here is something where you are going to be put into a situation where you have to test your skills against a situation that is probably more difficult than something that you'd face in real life. These not only give you a lot of ability to test your skills out, but they give you confidence. Confidence that you can meet real emergency situations, and when you go back into your regular life, it can make the stresses and frustrations of our normal lives kind of pale in comparison. I am not an instructor that likes to just sit on the sidelines and watch students uh, suffer. <laughs> so today I'm going to be putting myself through a challenge. And I've been knowing I'm going to do this all winter, but I've kind of been putting it off because it's pretty intense. Uh, you've probably seen some of my ice breakthrough videos. And some people have been asking some questions about those, some really good questions. One is, would that technique work if you're in full winter gear? Because I did it in, uh, in less clothes than I'm wearing. Another great question is, would it work if you're wearing skis or snowshoes? So today I'll be doing that ice breakthrough in full winter gear with snowshoes. Another great question people have had is, what do you do when you get out of the water? For my other challenges, I you know, within an hour at the most, I was back inside and could warm up. In this case, I'm going to be spending an entire night out after the ice breakthrough. So the challenge I'm putting before myself is to get out of the water uh, in full gear and with these on, and then to spend the night and hopefully not go into hypothermia. It's not terribly cold out. It's probably in the valley going to drop down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit or a little bit less. But that's still plenty cold enough to kill somebody of hypothermia, especially if you're wet. And so somehow I'm going to have to get dry. And I would like to see myself, my challenge for myself is in the morning, I would like to be dry and warm, not just having suffered through the night. All I'm bringing with me for this challenge is the clothes that I'm wearing, <clears throat> uh, my necklace that's on under here somewhere, and snowshoes I'll actually leave behind after, the, after I get out of the water. And I'm going to bring a, just a kind of cheap $15 um, lock, lock knife that I got from Fleet Farm. For the first part of this challenge, the ice breakthrough, I'm going to be having somebody that's on standby just to make sure I get out of the water all right. After that, I'm going to be self-shooting the rest of this, this video. So it's just going to be me, the camera, and you who are viewing going along out there into the woods and seeing if I can make it through the night. The ice breakthrough is going to be a little bit artificial. It's been a really cold winter in Wisconsin. And so most of the ice on the pond here is really, really thick. And I'd have to chop through it to fall through today. This is an area that has cleared partially. And hopefully nobody would be dumb enough to be walking out on the edge of this ice. But that, of course, is what I'm going to do for the sake of falling through um, in this video. I don't know how this is going to go or exactly what I'm going to do. Once I get out of the water, I have some ideas. We're going to have to see what the environment uh, offers up for me. Of course, it goes without saying that this is not a try-it-yourself type of activity unless you are very, very confident both in your, in your survival skills and in your ability to judge your mental state and to be very aware of your mental state. The big danger here is going to be hypothermia, especially once night falls and the temperature drops. It's a long time to try to stay warm, especially if I'm wet. Okay, I'm going to get my safety person for the ice breakthrough portion of this video. And 
put on my snowshoes, let the adventure begin. Okay, off into the woods. I'm gonna get as much of this water off of me right in the beginning so I can get a head start on drying off these clothes for tonight. So at this point, I'm losing heat quickly because I'm all wet. And so the first thing I'm going to attend to is to try to get fire. I'm going to walk about a quarter mile back into the woods, get away from, from the pond, get to a place where there's more wood available for me. I, the only thing I possibly have to make a bow draw with would be a, a drawstring on my jacket and it probably would break. So I'm gonna try for a hand drill. Behind me is Jerusalem Artichoke. It's a prime hand drill spindle. So I'm gonna grab one of these as a spindle. I'm gonna go back into this pine forest and try to find a piece of uh, white pine that's gonna serve as my board. Here's a beautiful spindle. I'm just going to break it. Take a look, make sure, oh, it's rotted out. Not as good as I thought. Okay, quest continues. Ah. Okay, my jacket's already starting to freeze up on me. So, I've got to really work fast here. I did find spindle that's going to work nicely and I'm going to use this piece of wood feels just about right Luckily, I still have some good dexterity to work with. Um, you won't see it. I'm going to put this up on some limbs so that it's safe and dry. I'll try to carve out a board here. I only have a little bit of light because it's late in the day. So I'm going to be doing everything fast. Trying to get fire as quick as I can. Okay, nice board made. And get a nice flat edge. Really, probably the most essential thing in a situation like this is 
is keeping your cool. Which is a solid, solid piece now. <laughs> you start to rush too much, then you make mistakes. Cut yourself, you know, or just not think. I already made my first mistake, which was back when I was down in the lowlands, I forgot to get good tinder bundle material. And so um, up here in the woods, lots of good wood, but, but just not um, good tinder. And so I tried to make a tinder bundle out of birch bark. This should work really nicely, but I gotta see if I can get a coal with these fingers. I'm getting a little shaky already. So, I'm gonna start by preparing this board and see if I can burn an initial hole. I'm using a longer uh, spindle than I usually would. And the reason for that is that I'm not going to have be able to pull off good floating technique and this longer spindle is going to allow me a lot more leeway as far as not having good technique. So, it should be more forgiving. Smoke already. That's great. Okay. Let me get this under my knee. Cut myself a notch. Being very careful at this point because my dexterity is way down. I do not want to slice myself open. Especially onto my thigh like that. It'd be very bad. So not the smartest thing to be doing it over my thigh, but I'm being really careful about how I do it. Taking out little chunks. Okay, I have a notch cut. Set my knife where I know it is. Tinder bundle's ready. See if I can get a call. Okay, Let's see what we can do here. Clumsy.
Oh, come on. Come on, hands. Oh, I just trashed my pile. Okay. This torch here, so you can see. Try it again. Okay. I've got to cut a new knot. Burned through that one. Smoke already, it's a good combination. The white pine and the Jerusalem artichoke. Yeah, there we go, real close. Okay, it's not a big coal, but it should do what I need it to do. Tipping upside down. Fire. <laughs> I know it looks like I'm burning the forest down here. I've got snow all around here. I'm actually burning away some of the flammable things so that I can have a more contained fire. You would not want to do this in the west or somewhere where you'd have duff. Here in Wisconsin, we have uh, I'm gonna move this away from this tree though. Here in Wisconsin, we don't have that same um, kind of duff, so 
the fire's not going to get away from me underground. The first thing I'm worried about here are my feet. They're really cold. I can't feel my toes. So I'm going to try to warm those up as soon as I get a good fire going here. Oh my gosh, cold, cold, cold. So, this isn't gonna be enough to keep me warm. Especially because I'm still wet. So, hypothermia will still claim me unless I can find a way to get myself warmer. I'm feeling, you can probably see it from the, from the fire here. It's a little bit of a breeze coming up and clouds moving in. So I know I'm gonna lose a lot of the heat that I have here. And we very well may have snow and winds coming in. So, I might have just made my second mistake in making my fire here in a place that's not really sheltered. Okay, just for morale, I'm spending some time just hovering over this fire, getting some warmth into me, and taking some time to think. I'm actually not too worried about the fire <laughs> here because my clothes are so wet. So, there, it looks like it's, they're smoking, they're just steaming and drying out. There's a lot of debate as to whether you should remove your clothes or not. And I'm still torn. I might take them off and try to dry them, but I kind of don't want to. <laughs> There's just enough wind that that's going to be pulling a lot of heat from me. So I think what I'm going to do here is try to build up a little bit of a wind block shelter and, uh, and surround myself with fires. So not just have the one, but have a number of fires around me that um, can heat me up from all sides. You can probably see the steam that's starting to pour off of me. That's good. That uh, means clothes are drying out. This thing, that is frozen solid and it's so wet. This may become my shelter to block from the wind because I don't think I'm gonna dry it out tonight. Okay. I took out the liners in my boots. And I'm using those as uh, kind of little booties. And I've surrounded myself with fires. Now, the, the worst thing right now is it's my feet, which they're not frost spitten, but they're dangerously cold. And um, I'm just losing a lot of heat. At this point, I'm surrounded by four fires. I'm really just tucked in with them here and getting comfortable with them. Um, <laughs> I'm almost sitting on one back here. And I've got myself off the ground. onto a few sticks so that ah, I'm not um, whew, so I'm not losing too much heat through touching the ground
and I'm gonna start trying to dry off some of my clothes. And I'm starting with with everything that has to do with my feet. So arrange these in, try to just warm up those toes, get them back to safe levels. And being surrounded by four fires, it's actually pretty toasty. So finally I can feel that I'm no longer at a heat loss situation, but at least stable. I like this four fire technique. I'm being worn from all sides. It's really nice. But you do have to keep your eye on everything. Again, I'm almost sitting on this fire over here. And after my clothes are dried out, that could be a fire hazard. And really have to be aware. And it's tough to be aware when you're really cold and your faculties are a little bit compromised. So, okay, I'm starting to dry off, starting to warm up. <sighs> okay, things are looking pretty good at this point. My biggest challenge now is to keep this up through the night. I don't think I'll be sleeping, but I gotta try to stay warm. I'm in a valley bottom and things are looking pretty good at this point. I'm warmed up a lot, still wet, but things are drying out. Unfortunately, I'm in a valley bottom and it's just, it's gonna be a lot colder down here than if I would have thought and taken the time to get up to the top where there's probably a 10 degree difference. So it's gonna be cold, but if I can keep some good fires around me, I should be okay. My feet are still the biggest challenge. They're just really cold. I'm not too worried about my hands because I can warm them right over the fire. But my feet are cold enough that it's hard to tell exactly how cold, you know, exactly if they're getting heat or not. So, yeah. I'm definitely gonna be fully smoked by tomorrow too. So I've decided, at least for now, to keep my clothes on. There's a lot of a lot of steam coming off of me, but this is a slow process. This drying, and I was feeling pretty confident before, but I'm cold, <laughs> and you know, there's I had some good food today, so I have a lot of calories in me that are actively being burned right now as I thermoregulate and try to keep up with the heat loss. But that's where I've, I've really got to try to rely on these external heat sources so that so I'm not burning all those calories. Because if I run out of fuel, essentially, part way through the night, I'm gonna get really, really cold. This, this is a technique I've used since I was a little kid, just letting that fire come right up. It dries things out, it warms me up, and heat actually kind of comes up through my neck. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Four really nice fires going now. They are good companions. I'm feeling really thankful to this hand drill, to the, you know, it's an ancient technology, but so simple, so effective, and 
to the people that have, have taught me this and helped me to get better and better at it. I'm so thankful for this skill. The good news is that I have my boots back on. I concentrated on drying those first. And they're not perfectly dry, but it's wool socks, wool liners, and they're dry enough now that I can have my feet in there and no longer have to worry about my toes going. So that's a huge relief. For me, especially when I'm using four fires like this, there's a tendency to, to want to spread myself really thin. And so my challenge is to try to remember to focus on one thing at a time. So after I got my wits about me and I started to warm up a little bit, then I just concentrated on the liners, on the socks, getting those dry and warm. And now I can start thinking about some of the articles, other articles of clothing that I have on. Not super well prepared. This is Everything I'm wearing is cotton. Wool would have been a really much smarter choice. But that's what I had on when I went through. And so that's what I get. My jacket that I've been using as a shelter. You know, the outside is still hard, but the inside now is dry. So that's really good. I could actually maybe be wearing that again tonight. In a situation where you are working with hypothermia, I almost like to think of, of heat as, as a currency that you have stored up inside of you. And you only get so much of it. I mean, I could run around and do push-ups and keep myself warm that way. But there's a calorie reserve that I'm going to run out of. And those food calories, especially like that really readily available food energy that's still in my bloodstream, um, that, that metabolizes really quickly and gives me a lot of heat. And so I don't want to, you know, squander that. And that's why, you know, if you're out all day long in a really cold situation if you're allowing yourself to get cold throughout the day you're probably going to have more trouble staying staying warm at night so I really think of being a little bit a little bit greedy with my heat <laughs> and really keeping it in as much as possible okay the wind is picking up a lot and uh, that's not good because it's it's making it a lot harder to keep these fires from burning me because they're in so close and it's also you know I have a real meager shelter here and so that wind is just pulling heat right out of me uh, Despite all these fires around me, I'm starting to get cold again. Not a good place to do this because I just, I didn't pick a sheltered place. And so, again, I was moving too fast in the beginning, just trying to get a fire going and wasn't really thinking. So, I'm going to either have to try to make a little bit more of a shelter here or I'm going to have to move. A little difficult to see, but... I've taken those, those three logs, put them here. So my jacket is covering up and then I'm patching up between those logs using some leaves that I can, that I found under some of these trees where the sun has cleared them. And I still have to patch up here, it's still empty. But, and down below, I've used snow on the other side of the jacket to bolster up. I'm going to close up all these gaps and then I'll be able to sit down 
there against the tree and there's my uh, boot insoles so I'll be able to sit right where those are and I'll tuck these four fires right around me and I'll be nestled in here. That should keep me going for the night. It's fine for me to relax and meditate here. Obviously I don't want to actually fall asleep in this situation. <laughs> One big disadvantage of what I'm doing here is that I'm going to get a lot of smoke inhalation. To counter that, I just opened up a really small hole in my wall here. And I can actually rest my head on this log and breathe nice fresh air as the rest of my body gets heated up by these four fires. Here's my little home for the night. I've reduced it down to three fires. And I just sit right there and they surround me. It's real nice. It's actually a little bit um, too warm, as you might imagine. The fire technique I'm using is just to have feeder logs. So I'm setting long sticks in there. And then I can just sit here relax, stay warm, and just nudge those a little bit further into the fire as they burn low. And that works pretty well so that I don't have to get up and move around because it is windy as soon as I step out of the shelter. I don't think you'll be able to see me. Uh, smoke inhalation was getting to me. So, I left the fires as some coals and I've headed out into the woods so that I can raise my body temperature just through moving up and down the hills. I've been wandering for about a mile now and Nice and warm. So I'm gonna head back down and check on my fires. I don't want to let those go out. I've been gone about an hour and still some coals here, enough to get that fire started again. Dawn is touching the horizon. Means I'm gonna head back down and check on my fire. This has been one of those nights that feels like it's been a week long. It's been a long, long time. In, in truth, I've probably been out here for for 12 hours. I don't have any uh, timepiece with me, so um, so I'm not sure. But that's that's my that's my reckoning. <laughs> I feel the challenges are are vital. For human beings today. We live in a spectator culture and we seldom get to actually experience our, our capabilities and to bring ourselves to our edge. 
This was a great challenge for me today. It took me to my edge on a number of levels. And I think, you know, a challenge doesn't have to be this extreme. It could be that we recognize when we become frustrated with somebody we love and seeing if we can shift that frustration into love and compassion. It could be fasting for a day. It could be, de it could be taking a cold shower. We can all create these challenges for ourselves that, that take us to our edge. And they leave us feeling vital and alive. They're adventurous. They're fun. Again, it doesn't have to be this extreme, but <clears throat> challenges are good. I would love to hear in the comments about anything you've done recently or plan on doing in the near future that's going to challenge you and take you to your edge. It was, it was a long night. You didn't get to see a lot of the hours passing. There were warm times, there were cold times, there were really smoky times and wanders up through the woods coming back shivering and trying to start the fire up but it was a really beautiful experience too and I'm so glad I did it and so glad that you came along with me I hope that you got something out of it and maybe learned a thing or two too since dawn's on the horizon I am going to stay by this fire until it dies down and then take a last wander through the woods, watch the forest wake up, and make my way to home. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it.